Hey, Woody here. Welcome to the studio. Today, we're talking about mocap suits and if we're gonna need them anymore. So as you probably know, there are already a lot of really cool AI motion capture tools. So I wanna talk about the limits of those tools. I wanna talk about the limits of mocap suits and I wanna talk about which one you should use. Also, I got a ton going on behind the scenes for using my VTuber. So maybe we'll see some of that towards the end of this video. I would love to cut in some footage of like what I'm working on with my mocap suit. Hang in there for that. Okay, first and foremost, you're gonna need to ask yourself, well, what am I doing with this thing? Am I working to create an animation pipeline? Am I trying to stream live content? Like I'm gonna interact with a chat like a VTuber? Or am I just cranking out assets? Or do I just need something small for like a little motion graphics thing? It's really important to be specific about your use case. And you're gonna hear me say this a whole bunch of times, every single motion capture system that exists has specific strengths and weaknesses and purposes. These AI motion capture tools are services that will allow you to upload video to their cloud services and receive motion data or animation data back that you can use. Here's me using Rococo Vision. This is actually a free tool that you can just sign up for and use right away. And it's interesting, it, you know, you could just give it a video or connect to your webcam and then you receive the data back. On paper, in a few ways, right now it seems like AI has suits tapped maybe. See, with AI, you don't have to wear any equipment. You don't have to be anywhere in specific. You don't have to have a computer. Some of these systems like Move One let you just use your phone. Heck, the Copilot channel did a video with Move One where they went underwater and recorded it and it seemed to kind of work. Those guys are really cool. You should check that out. Personally, I don't really use these. I have tested some of them. When I'm recording mocap, I typically want real-time feedback. I wanna see how it looks on screen as we're recording it. I wanna know that it works, especially if I'm like the technician in this situation. I don't wanna upload it and then guess and hope. I really wanna know that I can use it immediately. Or I actually wanna use it with my VTuber avatar right now in real time to be able to talk to you. It would be a really cool time to cut to that. Maybe these tools will get better. I'm actually aware of a couple of solutions already that are offering real-time mocap using AI, but I get the sense that it's not really quite there yet. The two notable ones are Move AI's partnership with Disguise and a company called Radical. These seem really cool. I have talked to some of the team members on both of these companies about this, and I'm really excited about what's possible there because like, I just have criteria. I'm not a hater and I don't like wearing suits. I really don't. Just for a little refresher, because I know a lot of you already know this, let's talk about how motion capture suits work. And for reference here, I'm just talking about inertial motion capture suits. I'm not talking about the kind with the little balls that you see in the movies that have like the giant Vicon rigs that are $70,000 that go in your ceiling. <sighs> Most of you aren't considering buying one, at least just what I'm guessing from this channel's demographics. So pretty much all of the inertial mocap suits, from what I can tell, are all using IMUs, or more properly, IMMUs. These are trackers that use gyroscopes, accelerometers, and here's the other M, magnetometers. And I don't know a lot about engineering, but from what I can tell, uh, it's only half the battle. So you get the signal off of these IMUs. That signal also is like has a couple of weaknesses, right? We get the magnetic interference, which causes drift. Those magnetometers, depending on where you are, say you're in a big city or you're in an old building with a bunch of iron in all the walls, that can sort of start to like drift over time and you know, you might have to recalibrate every once in a while. It's totally normal and it happens, but it's something that any suit operator can probably tell you about. So here's the thing, after we get the data from the sensors, then basically both the AI systems and the mocap suits have the same problem to solve, which is how does this make a 3D body shape in space across time? You know, how do we take this raw data and turn it into bones that move? And it varies a lot between all the different systems. They're gonna have you do different calibrations. They're gonna have different assumptions about little things like how elbows should move and stuff like that. They're gonna be using their own model that is reinterpreting the data into that 3D stuff. They're all making their own decisions about how that data plays out the most naturally. And at the end of the day, it, the signal does really matter. The signal that goes in, it matters a lot because a lot of these AI systems break if you're slightly occluded, which is another reason I don't really like using a lot of them. The Accent suit delivers 240 hertz of data back to my PC. So that's like a lot more frames. So it, you know, if we average this out and we have little errors and things, 
we drown them out over the sheer amount of data that we get back to my machine. So the AI systems, from what I understand, they can't work at that frame rate. Now you could probably record at 240p on your phone by shooting in slow motion. Pretty much any phone will do that now. Any modern phone will let you shoot absurd slow motion. But remember, you're paying by the second over there with a lot of them and they're thinking about those things like frame rate too. So that ends up being a little bit of a push pull. There are a couple of secondary things that you might want to think about. Now I mentioned I want real time stuff for VTubers and also for previews, but also don't forget about VR chat and stuff like that too. You might find that you want another system with sensors because you also do just a ton of VR chat stuff. So personally, I'm trying to be able to get to a goal of being able to walk through a scene, interact with it, pick up digital cameras from my mocap suit itself, no rendering, just like, like I'm talking to you right now, right to camera, just doing it like that. Lastly, before you go buy a suit because I've made a good argument here, or you tell everyone that suits are dead because I've made another good argument here, to ask yourself the most important question about the solution, whether it's either AI or suit. How much money does it cost? Let's say you're a motion graphics artist and you know you do some work with characters, but not all the time. So an AI system might be really great. You might pay 15 bucks and then do a little dance and then suddenly you've got a bunch of characters on a screen doing a dance. That's awesome. And that's specifically a great solution because it's cheap. None of them cost as much money as a mocap suit, but that being said, they're gonna charge you for use. So do you need to do long takes? Do you need to record long scenes? Because that is gonna break a lot of these things for you. And even if you're willing to pay the money to be able to keep up with those costs, oh my God, that's gonna take forever to upload and you're gonna not get your result back very quickly. A lot of the companies that are making these things are startups. Startups can be cool because they're made of small teams that can make really innovative stuff and you can maybe have a good relationship with them and you can talk to the devs on Discord, but they can also change really quickly because they need to. And I have already seen price hikes on certain features for certain companies. All of these companies are incredibly young and it's weird, but it happens. Go ask other people who use these services how they like them. Ask if that they're, you know, how they feel about certain paywalls. Ask if they've been able to receive support from other people, because that's the stuff that matters in the long haul. I'm gonna close out with a little story here. So about four years ago, I got my first mocap suit, which feels kind of crazy and insane now. I'm glad I did it, but the suit gave me a lot of problems over its lifetime, especially mechanical failure. Now, customer service was great. They could typically help me, but I got an email recently. That this suit is completely out of service now. Now I'm 90% sure that if I booted up that suit today, that I would have more mechanical problems with it. I would notice something wasn't working and then I would be out of luck to be able to get specific parts that I would need to be able to service it. Now that sucks. I also did a review last year of a suit that doesn't exist anymore. I did a review of the obscure suit and it's gone now. Like you, you can't buy one and if you bought one, you have a brick. So do your research and cancel your unused subscriptions. That's how you keep these companies honest. And if they make changes, you can make changes. Never forget that. This is turning into a Lewis Rossman video. Oh my God. Uh, AI is cool. Mocap suits are also here for a while. We'll see what happens. Bye. <laughs>